let's begin now this I suppose some would probably say this is more of a limited core exercise again because well white wolf blue black cloak it will be more than that rest assured now this is where we start out messy again I'm just gonna make sure there's a little, little bit of umber gets in and let's see the spattering and this is with with stuff that doesn't have a whole lot of thinner in it either not a whole lot of thinner this was the same with the with the acrylics when I would do this I did the same stage with the acrylic stuff too it wasn't just the oils where I did this kind of a pre-glaze thing go you can watch a lot of my acrylic videos same process the oils just is a way more effective use of this process than even the acrylics is oh let's see is this one of those commissions where they did not reveal the oh this is from it's something called signum I don't know what the name of the character or figure is but this is I asked him and he said it is from signum I thought this was from Mierce it had all the to me it had all the telltale signs of being a Mierce figure but it is apparently from something called signum I don't know what that is and that's the only word that I was given so I think uh, <clears throat> someone will just have to exercise their Google fool with uh, signum that that's all I know about it unfortunately uh, Dick Blick has the pigment numbers on their website uh, okay that that's oh yeah uh, thanks Baron uh, was the avocado kids the numbers make it easy to do, do, do. Uh, let's see, look at the pigments tab down on the bottom. Oh, hey, Rancid Vomit. How are you doing? Well, you, <laughs> this is also a person who is, uh, I don't want to say vehemently opposed to analytics and sports, but it has its place, but it's kind of overtaken things just a wee bit. It's taken things that are very, tasks that are very simple, like hitting a baseball, and turned it into something quite more complex than it needs to be. Now, I also need to have more Van Dyke Brown and a little bit more of my indigo out here. Ah, there you are, hiding over there. A little bit more indigo. Uh, backlog Battles, actually, uh, I think... Uh, well, I know our, our intrepid moderator can pop you up that link again, but it's a recent YouTube video that I did. Essentially, think, and I did this here. So let's say you need to glue this, this joint right here. So this hand to this arm. There's glue on the hand. There's glue on the arm. In between is a little dot of green stuff. And you smush those together, the green stuff holds it in place because none of these things ever match right and I don't care resin metal any of those type of things doesn't matter who's doing the casting they never line up that's why I'm not a big fan of the resin stuff well one way you can kind of counteract that is by basically filling that gap with green stuff which crystallizes when it gets hit by the glue because there's moisture in the green stuff and what what kind of accelerates super glue moisture water right and it just it strengthens it especially over time because it's you're not relying on just the glue alone and there is your link there provided by our wonderful moderator and actually I was just using that in last night's video too or last night's twitch session Like it's kind of like the color wheel thing. I just I see people really get psyched out by the color wheel, and that's why we just kind of preach setting that aside and just look at the color. Does it have more red in it? Does it have more blue in it? Is it more green? Is it more yellow? That can just tell you more just visually looking at it. 
than trying to compare it to some kind of artificial wheel with colors on it. Because guess what? The color wheel ain't going to tell you anything about saturation, right? How many times have we talked about saturation? Well, let, well, well uh, we're not quite there yet. But even in this thing here, you can try and compare this to the color wheel. What it can't tell you is the saturation in those greens and then some of the desaturated greens. It'll tell you, okay, it's this color of green, but it's not going to tell you the saturation level of that. I uh, never did figure out where the uh, that, that swamp witch came from. I can still... Uh, <laughs> We've only been working with uh, with that person since 2005. Just to keep reminding me, and I'll try to remember to ask him. I think I might have asked him, but then we were also talking about uh, oh, a, a box of uh, boxes of terrain kept coming in. We kept talking about the terrain and what had to be done with that. Now we're going to shift this a little bit here. So this is see, it's kind of almost like a reddish, but look at that. So that's for our that's for Mr. Wolfie right here. Oh, let me see. So, Rancid Bummit, I hope everything is going okay. What the heck does he got in here? I thought there was... I almost thought there was apples in this thing or something. So, as always, got to be willing to be messy before you can be neat. And we're just going to attack this thing. I mean, literally attack this thing. Because this brush that I'm using cost pennies on the dower. And it just says, yeah, whatever. I don't care. It don't mind. Now, the other thing, too, when you're doing this, I kind of suggest doing this on more than one figure at a time. You leave this sort of just set I don't have that time here, so we're going to kind of accelerate that process a little bit. The primer on this was just Badger Stino Res brushed on. That's it. Time for some burnt umber up here. Let this work its way down. I'm going to just take a little bit of my thinner here just to get that to flow. My only goal is to cover up that primer. That is the main goal here. I think we've got primer covered everywhere. Now I can grab back my other two figures here. And that's exactly how these started. As nasty as that figure looks, that is how these started. Let's grab ourselves some sponges basic makeup sponges let's cut these into some smaller pieces this is a this is another thing that I've definitely learned since starting out is to cut up these sponges well you use a lot less of them they're not expensive but ultimately you can be a little bit more targeted so we'll wipe this away but you can see what it's already leaving behind there was no zenithal priming here we just brushed down the primer. It was one color. One color primer. Look what this leaves behind. Why is this happening? Because this is indigo blue for the most part. If I had used Payne's gray over here, this is what would happen. See how much more of that comes off? You say, well, why do you want more of it coming off over here? Remember, the wolf's supposed to be white. That's supposed to be almost black. Ah, that's, that's what we call strategery right there. Uh, oh, Zip Zap. Uh, sorry that uh, those didn't come out quite the way you wanted. Uh, let's see. What is informing what pre... Uh, Zip Zap, sometimes it's very specific. Well, like here. Uh, you can go back and actually watch any of the Warcry ones here or anything that we were doing, the, uh, the object source lighting. So you could, you'll see that here we did a lot of the indigo, the Egyptian violet, then we wiped it off. Then we put some Fanchion Red in here, and we wiped that off, and it basically created the glow straight away, like right away. Obviously here, well, guess what? Our pre-glaze was mostly phthalo green. There was some umber up there. 
when you start mixing the lighter colors in there. And not J, you'll see this. So this this is the same process every single time. Same process every single time. What we're going to do is take advantage of all of this stuff here with those lighter colors over the top because they're going to mix with this. Because this is the difference between, I, I guess, your your zenithal priming versus this colored zenithal because my new colors are going to blend with all this stuff. So look at this. This right away, well, remember when we were doing this with our stuff like our osteoarchs? When I wiped away the preglaze, there were some people that said, yeah, that looks almost like it's done just by itself. Here, let's grab some smaller sponges now so we can get in here. But the idea is all this paint is wet. So when I go into this, every single color that I add to this will be affected by the colors that are here. Like up here, we got umbers. Well, when I put a light color over the top of this, guess what I'm going to get? I'm going to get a light brown. Over here, it's going to be a light gray. Over here, it's going to be more of a bluish gray. So imagine if you could put primer on something that stayed wet, yet was totally targeted exactly where you wanted it to go. Huh? Look at these skulls. And also, what's, what does the very first chapter of the Book of Waffles say? If a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. It must go everywhere. This is a great way to ensure that that color goes everywhere. Preglaze established. Let's start out with some lighter things, shall we? And here's our some of our off-white. Uh -huh. See how nice and dry that brush is there? And we'll use that same light brush stroke here on Mr. Wolf. Let's make sure we get some of that paint out of there. Here, I'm just going to get my paper towel here. And there's our clean. I need to get some... Oh, that's what I'm missing. I am missing some of my... Ah, there it is. The Brilliant Yellow Pale. I know there was something missing out here. I haven't put this out here since last night. Oh, geez, i got to fill this thing. That's, that's about the last of it. But fortunately, that's about all we need. Uh, let me see. I have a pile of shame. I love more natural things anyway. Yeah, Lady B, it definitely it establishes those shadows and it gives you some colors to work with. So this way, it, it, just think of it, well, I mean, you've done enough 2D art. What's the first thing you do is you try and block in shadows. You want to you want to know right away where those shadows are going to be. Now the advantage of the oils. Look at how that's blending. L look at how dark that is now versus oh, look at this. See how it's picked up so much of that color there. So instead of a dry brush, it's actually blending straight away here. We're actually getting real genuine blending right off the bat. Because when I do this with the acrylics, well, unfortunately, I don't get I don't get any of this fun blending stuff because well, it's all dry. Well, sometimes I do on the smaller figures, but for the most part, yeah, I don't I don't get to have fun like this on the acrylics when I do the pre-glaze, and it's the exact same thing. I just I slam down some of the Reaper clear paint or mostly liner paints. Where's my paper towel? We'll give this, again, a thorough clean. Look at this. Look at how thorough of a cleaning job we do on that brush. And then we just get rid of that paper towel. And let's get back to it here. And now we'll take this out here onto our cloak, which now starts to change colors again. Look at this. Got to go back. I got to get me some more. Only this time it's going to be the 
the much cooler white because I want the wolf's white to have some yellow in it because wolf fur that is white is not a bluish white because they're alive and they are just well warmer and they have skin underneath that white fur it's going to tend to be more of a tan yellowish white as opposed to a bluish white pretty much any critter that's got fur or feathers that's white when you compare it to the snow the snow is always a very cool color because well it's ice crystals and it's reflecting the sky and that critter well has skin and it's alive not reflecting so much sunlight or, or sorry uh, skylight the blue sky because it's not made out of ice crystals so again we're very rapidly starting to establish what's going on with Mr. Feathers here. We can see we're kind of working in the opposite direction. Uh, let's see. Oh, geez. Uh, now, Drax, uh, did you get all 40 of those prepped, or is this more of the uh, Necron Destroyers that you're prepping? Or just more of the specialty Necrons, I guess, is my, my next question. I think for I thought for some reason you had all of those warriors all, all built again. Uh, let's see. So Astra asks, how wet is your oil dry brush? That uh, that is how dry it is. Literally, that's what I've been painting with. And you can see, look at how dark that is. That was practically white when it started. We're gonna do that again. So you can see how light that brush is, but look at how little paint there actually is on that brush. LA Inner Excellence, how are you doing? Ah, uh, three more destroy oh, 20, 20 more warriors. Holy smokes. Now does I assume that the box comes with three of the destroyers in it? At least I hope it does, and not just one of them. Because don't, uh, don't they usually come with something like that? There's going to be three of them in the box. Here, let's uh, let's hit some of this on the weapon here, too. And let's not forget this. However, you see how it's starting to turn a reddish-brown right there? Oh, I'm glad you're doing good. Okay, so good. Three in a box. So this, uh, this is why I... We always like the when folks ask the questions because people kept asking, well, like that one, how dry is it? Just okay, you're saying it's it's a it's drier, it's less paint. How much less paint? And as soon as I did this and said, yeah, it's like a dry brush, all of a sudden people said, ah, okay, yeah, I can wrap my head around that. Now we just change this. We just change that because remember what we were talking about here. This guy is supposed to be alive, so we want some warmer colors. Well, not just on him, but also on that pouch. That's also going to be some kind of, I think, a leather color. So looking for warm stuff. So you probably see some Terra Rosa in there. We'll see if we can make some kind of a brown matter. Uh, look at this. Look at how blue that became. You can see the orange and then the blue because the the blue the indigo blue just overpowered the orange that's that's uh that is one rough and tumble color ah oh, i need to uh, start doing more painting and less prepping it is uh, inner excellence it's always a battle i know for me every day i got to prep stuff well i mean i had to prep this thing today this thing was probably prepped maybe an hour or two before I started doing the stream. So see how that's starting to change? All the colors starting to change here. Getting warmer colors into this. Skelly tones here. I think even the rocks are going to be a little bit warmer. Just again, separation from this cloak here. And I tell you, when I was in the meeting, I just had to say, this stupid filbert brush has taken ungodly amounts of punishment. 
This has taken months of punishment and it's still going strong. So hopefully this is actually going to be manufactured into a regular brush that you guys all can get. Instead of, well, kind of hunting around on, well, okay, we don't get Hobby Lobby here, that sort of thing. What the heck is in this? Uh, looks like feet. <laughs> I don't know what's in there. I have no clue what's in there. What I do want to do, though, is take some of the... Remember we were talking about making some kind of a brown matter here? So that's got a little bit of my alizarin. And we're just going to shove this right into here. I don't really care. That's got to be messy before it can be neat. And there's no better way to illustrate that. And just taking ye old brush and blam, doing the stuff here. Let's get some browns in there. Let's get some brown on his muzzle here. Yes, he's a white wolf, but we need some stuff that's not necessarily just white on him. Some strapping and wrapping, more leather there, something darker here. We'll probably do some glazing on that, too. A little bit of that brown down here. Oh, let's do some reflecting of that onto this blade here. <laughs> it says, like avocado kids, that is, that is no lie. That's pretty much the truth right there. Let's say I edited a video today. I did all kinds of photo editing and processing, shipped out a box, oh, shipped out two boxes, answered at least 50 different messages, emails, that sort of thing. Oh, no problem, Mastar. I'll catch you later. Thanks, uh, thanks for hanging out, and I will be doing this again tomorrow. Well, oh, it's still, it's still Friday. It's not Saturday yet. It's only 11.01. And we've only been at this 4 hours and 45 minutes. That's why, that's why we're going to keep on going here. We got all three of these done. Hmm. Time for a little switchola here. A little bit of our cadmium yellow. Ah, look what's look what starting to happen here. See, that's starting to change. Ah, look at, look at those perfect bristles right there. That is precious. This this is where we we say we, we may shock and horrify you because most people are shocked and horrified at a brush like that. Okay, let's see. I think uh do you even sleep more than an hour? <laughs> sometimes it doesn't feel like it. I mean sometimes even when I am sleeping, there's just so many things or the sleep schedule is so weird. I've actually had better sleep falling asleep on my exercise mat, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, like Armour Wolf says, no sleep. Hey, Biggs, how are you doing? How are you doing there, Biggs? Oh, what the heck? I'm going to let a little bit of this yellow sneak all the way out here. Color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. Ah, uh, look, look at this wonderful brush. I mean, that, that's beautiful right there. That is a sight for sore eyes. Or maybe it might make some people's eyes pretty sore. But we're also going to clean that one out. <laughs> About like that. And then we are going to do a little bit more of our lighter tones in here then we're going to follow that up with some glazing so now it's going to be a little lighter here ah oh, look at that look at that wonderful messed up brush yeah it's just perfect for what we need look at look at this nice look again we oppose the opposable thumb we're barely using that useless item That's when that's when evolution just got way too carried away and started adding things that we don't need. 
Well, that seems makes sense. I can't see how there would be. It's like 24 hours of daylight, 360. Well, uh, we have been actually both Armored Wolf and I, we have been definitely petitioning for a 70, let's see, no, at least a 48 hour day. Maybe even a 72 hour day. Now, of course, actions have consequences. So certain people might, might want to tie things down because I do believe when that rotation slows down, certain things might just start flying off the planet. But again, some must be sacrificed. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Dr. Gargunza, for the follow. That is appreciated. Let's go. Also have to figure out what's this going to be. Is this some kind of obsidian thing here, or are we going with some kind of metal? Have to decide. Not right now, though. Not right now. We are going to grab some of this here white. And let's start. Let's start to make our white wolf look a little bit more white. And I think we're still working with some of that pre-glaze. However, ah, look at that. See that lighter color that, or that uh, more reddish color? It's mixing into the fur here. So we're getting more than just white fur. We're getting some gray in there. We're getting some pinkish color. And guess what? By the nature of this disastrous brush, we're actually getting... There's a rhyme behind, well, not always, but there's a method behind this madness here. It's actually giving me some fur, literally fur brush strokes as I do this. So there's, this is strategery. This here's strategery, baby. Oh, let me see. Uh, stone blades. We can do that. I mean, it kind of looks... I think maybe we'll go with the obsidian. I can never go wrong with obsidian. Where's where's our orc? Here she is. Can never go wrong with obsidian blades. We'll do something like that. That'll be fun. Oh, let's see. Avocado Kids has to head out. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, Avocado, I got shelving coming too. Um, that should be here. Oh, I think Sunday. Yeah, there, there's literally more shelving coming this way. Oh, yeah. Ah, see how we're starting to take advantage of that with our Scully friends here? Oh, look at this. Now we're going to go all the way out here onto our rocks, which, by the way, is just a sheet of bulletin board cork because this thing was totally flat, and that was about all that was going to work. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Avoca, thank you for the stream. Uh, oh, yeah, catch you later. Oh, thanks, Lady B. Thank you so much. Uh, so how many minutes have we been working on this guy? Not very many. Not very many at all. Now let's let's get to something that's a maybe a little lighter, a little more precision, and then we'll get into some glazing, and then then we'll get into the purtier stuff. We'll make it all purty like. Let's really pop some lighter tones on here. Now that's already dark. I gotta go back. I gotta get some more. Ah, look at that. Let's do that over here. Ah, look what's going on. Oh, look. That top portion of his nose that we want to have a little bit of darker color on. That's staying darker. Oh, look at this. Huh? Look what's happening there. It doesn't take long. Now, well, I'll see it later, Lady B. Well, I'm sure at some point, because uh, tomorrow's stream is going to be... Well, it'll be a. Uh, it'll start at some point in the afternoon. I can't say exactly when. I never really know these things, but we'll be doing this again tomorrow for sure. We will see you then. 
Let's see if I can't grab a little bit of that yellow here. Oh, do we have Brown Town games? Yes, we do. Oh, thanks, Brown Town. I will show you some of the other stuff that we were working on here in just a pin. Oh, yeah, look at that. See, that's starting to... All of this starts to change. Yeah. Look at that. Touch that up here on his staff. Now, Terra Rosa. Yeah, let's do some Terra Rosa. But with a twist. Terra Rosa with a twist. A little touch of our yellow into that. Uh, and our same dual action. Actually, this is more like a triple action brush stroke right here. We are, we kind of press, twist, and lift. It's like brush yoga. Ah, uh, you you see that this is this is how much more zen can you get? We're we're doing brush yoga on the stream. This here is this here is as zen as it gets, baby. Doesn't get more zen than that. Brush yoga. Oh, and this is a downward facing dog. Okay. It's it's completely and utterly zen. I think we'll get some of this here Terrosa up towards the top of this thing. So Brown Town, I hope all is well with all the projects and all the stuffs. So the first oh about four hours and thirty minutes we did these two. Uh, neither of these had any paint on them, but well. We were able to knock these out, all of our fun rust and object source lighting, all the stuffs. So we tried fluorescent green, fluorescent orange, all the fluorescents. Hopefully, we will have more fluorescents here. Uh, <laughs> just, I got to remember to try and order those from Marion Street because I keep forgetting. Oh, look at this. Let's get a little bit of different color in there. Different color in the ears. Different colors over here. Oh yeah, trash. Well, the heater's going on. It's got to be in the... I'm thinking it's maybe in the high 30s out there right now. It's only... It can't be more than, say, 40-something degrees right now. So yeah, when it gets cold, out come the, out come the wristbands. Or also known as the Wapple Socks. All right, let's hit some of this stuff back here. We got this rope over here. We got whatever the heck these are. We got that. We got more of this, more of this. Okay, no more of that over there. But look at how much of that indigo. We're still picking up. Still picking up lots of that indigo. Again, a thorough cleaning of that brush. So trash, I hope everything is mellow today and the weekend is off to a decent start for you. Now that's going to be something like maybe if we're going to go with the obsidian, let's start to darken this puppy down and we'll darken this puppy too, but the thing that the puppy is holding, we're also darkening that down and we're shifting the color, shifting that color away from that kind of grayish red to something that's got a little more blue in it. Until we grab a little bit of our berry white green and start to change that a little bit. This is the great thing about the oils. We just spontaneous change. Say, you know what? We're going to change that. We're going to get some of that same green out here a little bit. I know it's not really going to register quite so much, but it is actually happening there. Oh yeah, you can really see it now. Wow. Okay. That's good. Start to 
target some more things here with our some lighter colors. Let's give them some chompers. Uh, his, his arm is in the way there. We're going to do a little bit of a glazy thing in there. Once I, I hit these chompers here, we'll take some of our alizarin and do a little bit of a glaze in there. Oh, it's his wicked elf in the house. Hey, wicked elf, how are you doing? So, folks, I think what well, you've already... Yes, there we go. Get your vellum foliage from Wicked Elf. That, there's only one place to get vellum foliage, and that is from Wicked Elf. And, folks, you know you want that vellum foliage. That vellum foliage is just... It's a fraction of the, the price of the far inferior paper foliage. It is more durable... It's more paintable. There's more various types of it. So do yourself a favor and get yourself that vellum foliage. Well, get the vellum butterflies too. Get the lily pads. Get all of the ferns, all the jungle plants. Get the leaves. Just do yourself a favor and get all of it. You'll be glad that you did. Ah, see, Mr. White Wolf now starting to stand out a bit. Ah, so Wicked Elf, I hope that it was a a week where you were completely exhausted from filling out massive amounts of orders of vellum foliage and not just exhaustion from all the less fun stuff that life typically has to offer on a daily basis. Ah, look at this. We're, see, we're... Now things start to get a little bit neater, a little more targeted each time. Let's get him some lighter colors on his hands here. We didn't forget about his hands. We were just kind of waiting for the, the pre-glaze that we did on his hands to just set a little more. Yeah, let's start to get some of the white fur here. There's not a whole lot of sculpted fur texture, so we may have to paint in some fur texture if we want it. Oh, let me see. Good morning. Oh, we got, yes, uh, you definitely have to because now, of course, one of the things we wished we could have done on those tree men that we were painting in one of the latest uh, Patreon videos, we wished we could have put butterflies on them, like a ton of butterflies. Can you imagine a tree man with a whole bunch of butterflies flying around him? Actually, that we're going to have to sculpt an ant for Lord of the Rings out of a bunch of branches. We'll just call him Twiggy or something like that. And then we'll have a whole bunch of butterflies just buzzing around him. And we'll, we'll kind of make him, uh, we'll give him the monarch butterfly look. There we go. Because actually, wasn't that the thing that Bilbo did, right? He stuck his head over the, the canopy there and then saw all of the, the butterflies or whatever and such at the top of that canopy. All right, let's go. If I'm going to make this blade, there, let's get some real genuine darks into that. What are we waiting for? More darks. More darks. A little bit of blending. Uh, Wicked Elf, actually, uh, were you going to be streaming at all this weekend? Because uh, it seems like some folks, their, their weekend schedules have changed a little bit. Because I know normally, gosh, I could swear that Jinx is usually, well, maybe she is streaming right now. I'll, I'll just check and see. No, no, she's not actually streaming right. I thought she would be. Now, I'm going to get even. 
Now, before I do the lights, however, I'm going to get a lemon my cadmium yellow here. Let's just do some eyes on this guy. Because if that skin gets too, or well, his fur gets too white, I don't want to lose track of the eyes here. Now we're going to do some glazing in here. Okay, well, I guess uh, so it only shows me five names, so she must not be in the... She's probably just starting. All right, so we're taking our... That's our nice dark Van Dyke brown. We are getting in a healthy amount of our thinner so that we can do some glazy things. If you want to have those things be lighter, we've got to make these areas darker and my plan my tricksy plan here is to actually have some kind of uh, patina like a greenish patina something that almost looks a little bit coppery but to do that I had to set up some darker stuff first we we're going to take this oh yeah 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 Take some of this and come here. That's a little bit of our cadmium scarlet. That should be interesting here. Just start to make this lighter, more on the reddish side. That's also going to help with our contrast with that green. If we are going to do that green patina, oh, this thistle's got to head out. Uh, oh, head to Hank's. Uh, I'll get in a plan for the desert terrain. Oh, well, you'll have to let me know how that goes, Thistle. Let me know how that goes. And I hope you guys have some fun, too. And just say say hi to Hank for us. Safe travels. All that kind of stuff. Ah, look at that. So you're getting some red in there now. Oh, Potion Seller. This is from... Oh, God. This is from something called Signum. So we were painting this... We just stopped painting this maybe about a half an hour ago. And this is a commission figure that I've got to finish off here. It also is kind of a, it's a little bit spooky. So we're kind of saving this for also for our Halloween stuff. This was the first miniature that we did. A little bit of War Cry here. Some Corvus Cabal. Now, cool thistle. Again, I hope you have some fun. And hopefully you roll lots and lots of sixes and steal the initiative. We're going to come back in here. We are going to solidify a little separation there with the white fur. Really starting to build in some of these nice, wonderful darks. Then we can start to turn around and build in some lights. That's going to be our indigo blue, mixing in with our white here. And that's that fast matte white, titanium white from Gamlin. Oh, I think we're. Uh... Oh, thanks, Potion Sarah. This is we're just playing around with our the pre glaze that we did, which was mostly indigo mostly indigo then we put sort of a kind of a grayish light color over the top of it we're going to go in with a color that's sort of similar to what we're using here on this blade now but we're going to get a little bit of our reflected light on that blade at this point and then we'll take some of that same color here we'll go into our wings very much like where is our other corvus cabal here so a lot like the, the colors that we've got in the wings. You can see some of the greens in there. You can see there's purples in there. So we, we've still got our Egyptian violet out here. We're still going to be doing something a little bit like this. You can see feathers together for some comparison. Let's get some of our nice bit of reflected light into here. 
toes darker claws uh, can't really see those very much on the other side of the thing won't worry about it we're going to get a touch lighter here uh, good you can see that we're just going to say that's some form of leather slash skin we'll just mix this up real quick here this is where we save so much time with the oils we are not doing any kind of layering there we just we took a much lighter color dove right in over the top of it let it blend did the same thing with the first two miniatures so again this is an area we're just gonna let that blend with what's in there same up here oh that's another pouch over there okay good to know this is where we're going to get a little bit of see that pinkish color now is going into his fur so it's not all just that cooler white tone I mean, we can still get a little touch of that, but remember that there's skin underneath that fur. The skin is not white. Yeah, we're going to get some of the coolness out of these shadows here. Some of those shadows got a little bit too much of the coolness in them. We're just going to subtract a little bit of that quickly, very quickly. No lingering. We will not dawdle on one area. We are, however, going to take our... We're going to respect the umber now. Let's respect that umber with a little bit of glaziness here. Boom. How's about a little more? Yep. There we go. Starts to make, get a little bit of separation from the white of the fur. It sets that back, makes this come forward, even though it's actually darker and the skin color is lighter. And then, oh, look, we can even blend. This is the thing that acrylic glazes just kind of don't let you do. Well, unless you want watermarks galore, hashtag not water, no watermarks. I'm going to let that sit for a little while because I want to do that that green patina. We have plenty of phthalo green sitting out here to be able to do that. Oh, my goodness. There's, there's a lot of it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now we've got this blue-gray here. And from what we recall, over the last few times we've had, well, somewhat more success with it, it's had to be stippled on. We will just do some stippling here and... It sticks. When I just try and brush that stuff on, it doesn't want to stick. Yes, folks, be sure to thank our moderator. Especially do that by heading over to the Armored Wolf Etsy page. And check out the dice bags for sure. But really look at the, some of the other, some amazing, all hand done so leather all. goods. Now, yeah, Wicked Elf, thank you so much. Here, we're going to do that. It's a six month subscription. We're gonna let that drop right down, boom, into the cup and catch all those little splashies. Thank you so much. Ah, that is appreciated. <laughs> I, I swear there's I'm tempted if I put a net up here. If I had if this guy was mine, I'd be tempted to put a big net there and have a bunch of butterflies buzzing around his head. Which you could do that. With those wicked out butterflies now of course you know dire butterflies you know that that might he might be a little bit more scared of the dire butterflies at that's at some point yes dire butterflies here let's uh keep going with oh look at these little see these little stipply thing this was the perfect thing to do because we needed a stippling brush stroke and it's also giving me the texture that I want there. So kind of getting a little bit of a twofer out of this here. Do I want? Yes, I do. I'm going to get a smidge of this out here too. We're going to be doing some 
some glazing out on the cloak here as well. Now you have just uh, doing it for the puppet shows. Well, you gotta have the puppet shows. You come here for the miniature painting, but you stay for the puppet shows. This is this is only the most. This is like high quality educational. It's like an edge drama. You got the drama of the puppet shows. I mean, we're we're talking. Yeah. Forget Greek theater. Forget the Iliad. Forget that kind of stuff. That's just like. Those are just little Reader's Digest stories right there. The puppet shows here. I mean, we're talking raw emotion, drama, tragedy, everything. Now, that blue, remember, we're warming up his face. What's going to make that look warmer if this is cooler? Where's my... I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to have to throw some more of that white out here, too. And remember, a lot of the white here, that is the off-white yellow that we have been incorporating into that. I suppose I can never really, and I'm sure Wicked Elf and Armored Wolf, they remember all of the, the confrontation days with the with their wolfen, the good old days of confrontation. Well, I don't know if they were necessarily good old days. They were the old days, for sure. We'll pop a little bit more of our lighter edge here. Keeping that nice and uneven because, well, this blade's a wee bit chippy here. Where's our... Ah, there you are. Uh, see kind of what we were doing here? So this one... I don't know. This was within the last week. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, Wicked Elf, do you have any of the... It wasn't Ravage Mag. What was the the old confront, confrontation magazine? I think we have one of those. We we might have a second one, but I think we only have one of those. Well, it's more like a catalog, really. But remember the remember the trolls and the pirate goblins. Oh my goodness, those things. Oh, and Kathy's. I think her favorite is actually is the mid noir dwarves. Nice thing about this, he said, ah, you know what? Don't really like what happened there. Well, that's uh, that's no problem because, look, we have a whole bunch of paint that's just sitting there to say, oh, erased. It's like an eraser. Speaking of erasers, if you're looking, I, I've been remiss, haven't mentioned the brush cleaner right here. Look at this, dried acrylic and oil color. So it gets rid of acrylic, which dries in your brushes way nastier than oils do. And it is not hazardous, it has no vapor, but we'll show you how effective it is. We will go all sham wow here. We're just going to get a little bit of this onto here. And there is some acrylic paint. There was acrylic paint there. Uh, it's all gone now. That's how effective that is for something that has no toxicity. It's not no vapor, no flammable, nothing like that. Not going to catch on fire, or spontaneously combust, or any of those kind of crazy things that you hear about. Nothing like that. We're going to hope that there's a little bit more of our brilliant yellow pale in here. That's literally the last few drops of it. And there is your link to it. So I caught my white how many, two minutes ago. Uh, found a confrontation. Tar-esque. Oh my goodness. That wasn't uh, well, that wasn't part of the, like the Griffins or something, was it? Because I, I always kind of, I kind of like the Griffins. I did like those crazy horsies. Remember the that bard figure? That was always kind of fun. All right, Wolfie. All right, Wolfenstein. We'll go even lighter here in some parts of the fur oh yes look at see how much lighter we can go yeah you thought we had gone as light as we possibly could we're still not even at white yet 
We are still not actually at white. I just see this little uh, crescent shaped thing in here. Didn't uh, all the wolfen, well, a lot of the wolfen have some of those crescent shaped things? I was an alchemist for an orc faction. Oh, Durs, right? D R I S or something, or D I R S or whatever. There was that faction. Of course, I did. I did sort of like the Celtic, the Celt, the, the barbarians. You know, the Keltoi. Those, those were kind of neat. I mean, now you look at them, maybe not so impressive, but I suppose for their day. And eh, there we go. A little more resolution on on that skull. Let's do some more here. Again, take an event. All that you, I can still see some of that original bluish color. That's still there. Some of that blue is still around. So there we go. Some fur, some lights, lots of fun things going on. Let's do some more here. And then this may have been sitting around just long enough for us to maybe get into some of our some of our uh, nice little greenish verdigris effects let's do some more lights around his face eyes muzzle hands paws elbow leg again just taking advantage of that pre-glaze that we threw in here look how fast this happens i mean this is basically i think less than yeah not even an hour we this was primer less than an hour ago look at this here there's easy and then there's easy and we keep saying it over and over and over again you want to make stuff easy, well, I would consider the oils now pink time. Let's do some pinky stuff here. Let's do a little bit of pinky stuff. Just cause. Ah, see that? That's a that's a little bit of confrontation right there. Wouldn't they were doing something like that? Of course, they did theirs with layer after layer after layer of, of thin glazing that because that was their that was their vibe right there was doing all that glazy stuff like watercolors terra rosa oh more more cadmium yellow more cadmium yellow. i want to get that's what i'm looking for that's it I was just hoping to put in here a little bit of that sort of telltale kind of wolf warm brown ridge line there. Bingo. This needs to be also lighter. Any brush is a blending brush if you really want it to be. Just a quick little scumble there. Bang. Blended. Good enough. Move on. Umber. Glazing. Little, almost like a somewhat dry panel line wash. darker oh I, we can hit i think i might do some more of the yeah there's going to be a lot of the our whatchamacallit stuff that, hey, let's get some of that green now I, it doesn't have to be anything particularly supposed to actually have a little bit of the fluorescent green in it i suppose i'm going to go back to a little bit of the thalo green there yeah let's get some of our white into that We'll start out with it slightly on the darker side, and then we'll lighten it up from there. All right. Let's go with this here.
Doing some of, ah, doing a little bit of verdigree type stuff in here. That's, that's better. A little bit of verdigree. Some more here. Just a bit over here too. Because why not? Ah, see, that's a, I don't know, to me, it gets a nice little color contrast here versus all of the... We're trying to find color wherever we can. That's why we put a little bit of pinkishness there. The verdigree here next to some of the reddish browns. We'll get some of that up here too. Ah, see a little bit of that verdigree. Does it necessarily make sense, but... As soon as I started thinking about confrontation stuff, that's all I could think about was all the verdigree stuff that they did. They really loved their verdigree. They did that an awful lot. And what the heck, I'm going to throw some of that up here too. Well, I think they would probably make these amber. Ooh. Change. Change. We are going to change these. We'll change these to something that looks more, instead of amber, let's make these more like jade. Always got to be willing to just make mid-course corrections. If a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. And why not? Let's it here to the Book of Wapple. If we're going to do that verdigree stuff somewhere else, why don't we do some jade here and carry that green? Again, how hard was it to make that switch? Not that hard. Not very hard at all. Get some more of our nice little green verdigree in there and maybe we'll drop a little bit of this green onto the blade here before we come back in and add some more lights to it. But we're going to have to get some lighter colors under here, but not just lighter. They have to have some warmth to it. So that's got a little bit of our umber. So yeah, for get, maybe getting lighter, but there is a little bit of warmth to that. So I won't mess around with the verdigree anymore. Let that, just we've done two glazy things right in a row there. That's got to sit for a while. Oh gosh, whatever this little ring is here. There's a couple of these little rings. I think we'll try and give those a also a, some kind of a light bluish gray here. Start out up at the top. I know you probably can't see a whole bunch of what's going on right there, but just bear with me. Maybe this one you can, ah, you can see that one a little bit better maybe. Still get not quite sure what is in his little pouch thing. I mean, it could be, it could be rabbit's feet for all I know. I just, I don't know. I am going to do a bit more Matera Rosa here. Yeah, that really gives it kind of, wow, that's going to give it an interesting little kind of a fleshy tone there. There's still some of the original bluish pre-glaze sitting around in there, which is nice. I can play with that, bring it into this, almost make it a little bit more grayish. Hey, Sean Allen, how are you doing? Welcome in. Let's see, another 100 minis. Uh, change to white primer. Next mission is paint the first miniature in oils. So, Baron, now did you uh, kind of uh, pick out Something that would be, oh, what do we always kind of say, give you that sort of pathway to success there. A figure that's, 
oh gosh, we don't want to say easy, but something that has those big old surfaces. I mean, to me, pretty much almost any artisan guild figure sort of suits that, that build right there. And you, you might be seeing, well, I'm hoping that the next uh, few artisan guild factions also end up here on the painting table because those are fantabulous. We love the artisan guild stuff. And of course, we have done, and oh, look, it also happens to have lots of wondrous wicked elf foliage all over it. So this is the dark elf on the cold one. We've got, come on over here, we've got our Medusa right here. Absolutely love doing that. So, and I, I just was shown their, their unreleased faction, and that's going to be pretty amazing. I, I do believe that Greg is printing up some of the the, what's the the latest one that they did with the genies and the kitties and that sort of stuff and also the bird the birdies actually I was kind of hoping there might even be enough to be able to do an army painting series on them because that would be super fun ah okay all right that's good <laughs> Because anything, well, with, well, even something like this, this is not a bad one for the O's. There's, there's broad surfaces, kind of. There's also some details. There's a lot of handy things like this. We're doing the so-called dry brushing. Oil style will get you some really nice results. Here, let's, let's do, where's my umber? respect thy umber I'll mix it with our off-white yellow there and we'll just get some of these scully friends a little bit lighter oh, we might even lighten up that rope in a couple of places oh that's actually like a piece of metal that's like metal twisted around so I, I didn't think this was, this was definitely not a digital sculpt. This was most definitely sculpted by hand here. Now, his little tootsies, let's do that with the, let's get a little bit of magenta onto that. Mostly just to have something different than everything else that's around it. We're even going to get see, a little hint of magenta-ish, ball pinkish color on whatever that is. Oh, we do have some of our... Okay, <laughs> I thought I'd forgotten to put that out. Now let's see if we can't get some lighter stuff. Speaking of Artisan Guild, where's our work lady here? So that's what we're going to be trying to do here. Some of those effects right there. Uh, let's see. Sean's got D&D &D figs. They've always been my thing. And 25 mil tabletop. Uh, all it takes is money. Super easy. I need to find... Uh... Oh, where are we going to go first? Let's pick a few edges along this here. And along the edge of our whatever blade this is, whatever it's made out of, we'll just maybe hint that it's something like obsidian. I don't know. Maybe it should just be stone or whatever, but hey. <laughs> we'll see how this works. We're also going to get some of our little chippy things in here if we don't like that it just goes away it's like yeah uh that's gone i'm gonna get me a little more white on 
well, lighter color here to separate some of these things. I'm going to try and get some lighter stuff in his face. I also don't want to lose that pink coat now, his nose. Oh, what the heck. We'll just go with the... Whoops, that's a lot of, that's an awful lot of indigo from when we had our pre-glaze mix there. Now I think it's a little bit more brownish. Ah, that's better. Also makes the... Well, guess what? The white looks that much more white by adding this dark here. Yay. Let's see what we can do as far as giving him some eyes. Uh, let me see. D &D, uh, let's see. These larger miniatures. Uh, Sean, those are more of just a, it's a kind of a teaching tool to show people what you can do with the oils as far as blending. It's easier to see on camera. So, you know, something like this. Obviously, we can... We can do whatever, but if you've got something that is a much larger scale, like this, then you can show a little bit more of the, the freehand stuff. It just It's easier to see on camera for folks. And with the larger surfaces, you can do more fun stuff with the oil blending. Now, obviously, for me, you, you can see with, the, with my armies here, I'm going to actually do something like this here. So obviously, you know, Sisters of Battle, those are going to be your, your 28 mils. And you know, let's say, oh. so again, bolt action, obviously all going to be typical 28, 30 mil, whatever. And we're going to get into, well, even Dark Sword for, for your D&D stuff like so. Uh, yep, Sean. I just showed you some bolt action figures. I just showed you Sisters of Battle. That's for 40k. So there's some more 40k. There is your Necrons. There is Terrain. Actually, you can go to my YouTube channel. I have several battle reports there. Now we're going to get into some of my... Oh, here we go. There's some more of our... These are all basically 28 mil figures. People use those in D&D. &D. Here's some of my Lord of the Rings figures. There's Harad. There are some of my Rohan miniatures. There is my Dull Amroth army with the Cav, Army of the Dead, Morgul Knights, and we also have plenty of Song of Ice and Fire, tons of Song of Ice and Fire. Here's more units of the Song of Ice and Fire Baratheon Wardens. Here's some more Song of Ice and Fire. So you've got some of your, there's more Lannisters right there. That was done actually with contrast paints. You've got the more neutral, oh, this was done in oils right here. And obviously some more Cav here. So I have tons and tons and tons of all of those figures. <clears throat> and actually this is going to be used, not by me, but by the person that commissioned this. This is also going to be used in games. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Mike Redart, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. So essentially, outside of those larger scale figures, everything that I paint is definitely meant to be used in games. Now we're going to continue to get our lighter colors onto this. We, we need to do some lighter stuff here too. Let's get some edges on these. Now I need to do some verdigree up here. Why not? Now that our stuff that's going to be jade-ish, jade-like, we're going to change that. We're going to use some yellow in on that because now we'll get a different green than what we're getting over here. Oh, much appreciated, John. Yeah, uh, just you can head on over to the Instagram. Just uh, give that a look. See, I'm just Wapelius on Instagram, just like here on the Twitch channel. And I post stuff there all the time, actually. Uh, so we've been working on our Asiarg Bone Reapers. Now, this was an individual stream that I made, but also 
this is my the rest we're starting to work on the rest of the bone reapers army over here that's one part of my patreon series there and of course more rohan and all these were done in oils on various streams here let's get back to our yellowish green here so again a little bit different look than say the green that was on our verdigris which is much more of a bluish green this is also a more saturated green because it's much more the pure thalo that's in there and then once that sets a little bit we'll get some lighter stuff in there you can also check out the blog there are hundreds and hundreds of blog posts oh as Sean that is my favorite game I, I love my Lord of the Rings now I have done we can just kind of blast through some of the other so Tomb Kings this was my tournament army for 2014 actually my very last tournament especially for fantasy because well they wiped it out months later and this was my Tomb Kings right here a lot of scratch building lots of conversion almost everything on that upper level was scratch built I think at least seven or eight tutorials just came out of this army alone so the Colossus the Hyro Titan that screaming skull catapult all was scratch sculpted just like a lot of the lizard man army was lots of scratch sculpting there but wait there's more because there's the Dark Eldar army I would have loved to have been able to do this in oils. Oh my goodness. And there's there's a little wee hint of just how big the army was. And then our our Easterlings. And I've got at least a dozen different Lord of the Rings armies that I'm working on right now. There will be more. There should be at least about 15, 16-ish armies or so. Now we're going to see about getting some edge lights on that ah, that's it there we go I just need to get a couple little edge lights here oh like that see how sharp that makes that back into our off-white yellow again we need to lighten up a few things here maybe even that edge a bit all of these crescents, it really does remind me of some of those confrontation wolf, and that is for sure. Oh, thanks, Sean. Yeah, the. Uh, let's see, I think I've got 17 bolt action armies that I am working on right now. At, uh, at least, at least about that many. There might even be more than that. Terrain. Wild West Exodus, I think I painted at least five different factions for the Wild West Exodus stuff. Dozens and dozens of miniatures there, that's for sure. Oh, let's keep going with our, our lighter color here onto the his arm, stuff over here. And actually, if you go back and watch last night's stream, you will see the, speaking of Lord of the Rings, the Witch King on Fell Beast. That was a very fun, well, it's a diorama base, but it actually is, it's designed with the game in mind because our terrain is always very rough, lots of hills. And that base is designed to keep him stable because, well, pretty much I've never seen anybody's fell beast that didn't just fall over as soon as it wasn't sitting flat on the table and that is specifically designed to be able to go on to hills especially rolling hills I'm gonna set you aside let you just have a a minute or two to well not dry but you know the drill by now so here is our big old diorama base on our fell beast right here we even have our warrior of gondor there i'm just gonna 
zoom out for a smidge. There we go. And the idea is that it holds this nice and steady. And there's a ton of weight on this base. So that Miss Witch King flying around here does not fall over in the middle of a game because, well, we don't really want that. Let's zoom in again here. There we go. Now, we still haven't done any dark stuff in his eyes, but before we do that, I'm going to take some of my yellow here, and we're going to try and do some orange things. This is actually some of my fire color from the other miniatures. I'm going to try and give him some nice blazing orangey eyes here. I think that could be interesting. I mean, he is kind of a shaman type of a thing. Now we're going to... Yep, we're going to just gonna go right to my darker color here. So let's take a little bit of our indigo because that's going to be a nice contrast to all of that bright orange stuff. Yeah, we just painted that one in the stream last night, so you can go back and watch that. Actually, all of the streams, they're all saved as highlights. So if the VOD obviously has, if it's past its two-week time, before that happens, I make sure, I always make sure, as we add his, his little pupil in here, to make it a highlight so that you can go back and watch it. You can also watch some of the YouTube videos. I will take sessions like this and I'll break it into three parts because we we're doing three miniatures here and you can watch that on the YouTube channel. Okay, we're just going to try and get his eye right in here. Boom. There we go. Ah, see? He has his eye now. I think we're pretty well set there. Oh, let's get some let's get some darks in here. We we did all the verdigris stuff. Now I'm gonna kind of go back the other way, reclaim a couple of darks here. Can't hurt. Maintain our shapes. Oh, let's get some uh, little slices in here with our dark color too. While we're at it. Back into our black here. Well, it's mostly a bluish black because, well, obsidian and all that. More dark here. A little more dark there. Uh, still not quite sure what the heck is in those bags. It doesn't really matter. You can't really see much of it anyways. We are going to take a little bit of this yellow here and let's see what sort of lighter colors we can add to our skelly friends. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that definitely has to have more of a umber feel here. There's just too much of our bluish gray there. It's a little too much of a good thing. Same on this guy. We'll get, well, whatever that is later. Don't know if that's supposed to be metal or not. Oh, you know what we could do? Let's grab a little bit of this crimson here. And just a little bit of that magenta right around his eye. It's just crazy enough that it might work. Just to keep some color there. A little bit of blending here. Oh, I need to get some, well, not quite the verdigris style green, but we are going to take a little bit of this 
crazy barrett green. It's kind of a brownish green. And there we go. Because there was just too much of the same that's happening here. As much as we like that terra rosa and such, if it's all just terra rosa there, that's going to get a little bit boring. So throwing a little smidge of this yellowish green in here. Ah, a little right there. Let's do some here as well. We'll do some blending on this stuff. Let's get some edging on this. Like this here. And there. It doesn't take much. Not a lot. So back to again, we got some yellowish green here. Get some separation. Let's go back to our Terra Rosa. Maybe not quite so pinkish. And we haven't forgotten our little runic things up there. We'll go back to those. I'm just checking my yeah some of these wrappings here that some of that's just still the original pre-glaze still haven't figured out what that crazy thing is what I am gonna do is maybe hit it with some of this well that's Prussian blue I just don't know exactly what that's supposed to be, but we it needs to be a little different color. Yeah, see, it's got a little bit of bluishness to it now. Speaking of bluishness, let's take some of the, the white here. We'll mix it in with that. I mean, it's going to be a kind of a much more bluish intense type of thing, but let's do some of these here feathers. Now, it wasn't really long ago that we would have used Payne's Gray for this. Uh, eventually, Payne's Gray will probably make its return to the palette. It's not forever banished. You can even go back and watch a, a relatively recent session where we were comparing the Payne's Gray kind of directly to the Indigo Blue just to really illustrate the difference between them. Yeah, okay. Liking the fact that there's that, that bluishness there because we got so much of the warm stuff that's going on with, with him. I see we, we still have a little bit of that barite green that we threw on there a while back. I'm glad to see that's still around. Oh, I'm going to just throw a little bit of lighter color on the end of his claws here. Little punch right there. Now maybe on the end of his toes here. I mean not too much. That is kind of a shadow area, sorta. Let's not get too bright there. Speaking of some lighter way, we could certainly use some lighter colors over here. Nice and dramatic. Let's get some fur texture. At least that's what I think they sculpted in there. I could be wrong. I'm just looking to see what is wolf fur and what is now feathers that it kind of gets closely integrated here. I think we need to actually go some white here. Now, yeah, definitely armored wolf. This is uh, 
anything with Brody is uh, definitely not going to, any no metallics allowed. It's just kind of one of those things. That's the, always the curse of the commission things. You have to do those the way they are ordered. And, oh, geez, we've been doing stuff for how long? Since 2005. And I've, I've asked him a couple of times. And definitely, <laughs> that is definitely a new way. Well, it's it's not so much that he's against it. it. He just wants it to match. I mean, it has to match. Do, oh, yeah. There's a... Uh, couple edges here we're going to get we will come back and do a couple of little glazing thing now the the runes are, I'm not going to try and make those glowing we'll just make them look like they're carved in some kind of jade there that's just going to be I think that's going to read a little bit better if this were more mechanical maybe we could get away with that but this was definitely sculpted by hand. Has all those telltale traits. I mean, you can you can sniff out something digitally sculpted for sure. You can always sniff out something sculpted by hand, which is getting rarer and rarer these days. Uh, oh, gee whiz, almost forgot the news. Has to have a bit of a highlight here. Then we'll let that blend with what's already there. Oh, this is some of our, gosh, that's some of the Umber and Terra Rosa from Good Grief a couple miniatures ago. That's just a little, little portion of that get out here and then we are going to do our little blendy thing here yes white wolf it needs some kind of a little bit of color in there that's why we did the again the magenta stuff just trying to find some color oh thanks sean appreciate that let's see uh No, anything. Uh, it has a metallic look to it, unfortunately. So, yeah. Well, you know him on the snow, because the snow that I do now is infinitely better than the snow that I did years ago, but it has to match that old snow. That's why I dread doing any of the winter stuff, because I literally have to make... I have to go back to snow that I, I did 15 years ago, and I don't do snow that way anymore. Yeah, backlog, it's, uh, I mean, we did the non-metallic metal stuff because that, but that's what uh, was, when you were doing the miniature painting, especially for any miniature companies, it had to be that way. And we have never once actually been requested to do a figure in metallics ever in 20 years of commission painting. We have never been asked to do that which is it's kind of interesting that over the course of 20 years we were never once asked which is that's why i'm glad that we're doing i get to do the patreon stuff because the only reason i'm getting to use the color should the uh ir not the iridescent the what's that stuff called interference blue is because this is my own stuff here Otherwise, yeah, never would get a chance to. Or, where's my where's my Necron guy hiding over here? Yeah, those metallic oils, never would have got a chance to use those, ever. And there's all kinds of fun. I mean, it's basically metallic or non-metallic, just done with the metallic paints. Little TMM there.
but I think it was all kind of all started with, well, cool mini or not really, and the dark dark age stuff. That was the first stuff that I started painting for companies way back in the day. And there's definitely plenty more Song of Ice and Fire stuff coming. I think it's mostly, it has to do with, well, these commission things that you've seen me do, they just had to get done this month, right at this time. It just had to happen. But also, it kind of went with the theme of the, the orcs and the spooks and everything else. Well, you know what? I'm going to take a little touch of my thalo green here, mix it with some darker stuff. And maybe even a couple of darker things on some of these jade there. Sorry, that went off. The screen is a little bit uh, taller than some of our other figures we've been working on. So that's okay. So we are what not even six hours in, and all three of these were nothing but primer when we started. Again, that is the power of the oils. Literally, all of these were pretty much the same color as, as that. That's what they started. It was basically like that. I do think this, I dare say, this really does prove what you can do with the oils. Now, you can go back and check out, of course, all of the, speaking of Song of Ice and Fire, watch those Dothraki units get painted. All four horsemen plus the movement tray, plus the, even the grass tufts, all painted in one stream. Thank you so much, oils. Just having a blast here. Can use the fingers, use all kinds of... Hey, everything is a tool here. I mean... That opposable thumb, you just have to put it to work to do something. Make it earn its keep. So that was just a little bit of our... Actually, that was a dark... A very, very dark green. We took some of the phthalo green. We had mixed it with our black. Uh, we need, oh, that's, remember I was promising a little bit of our alizarin here into the, his mouth. Now is the time to do it. Oh, that is some serious, nice, dark, deep red. Let's do it. Right there. Now, of course, with the, we have, all the lights are set a little bit lower here. That is going to be a nice, deep red in the final images. Let's get some of that red over here too. Very nice. Even along his lower lip there. Yep. Might even hit a suggestion of pinkishness here. Not quite the fanchion red pink, but something like this for the interior of his ear. Again, mostly just to get a little color separated from all of the darkness here in that cloak. Back to something that's a little lighter. Still has a little touch of that red mixed into it. I think his lower, eh, I think his lower jaw here could also use some light. Yep, uh, that the lower jaw was a little bit weird. There was kind of a, essentially a gigantic gate or vent or something on it, and I, I did carve some of that away. I thought, well, maybe at first he was supposed to have some kind of a beard or something. back into our white. OK, 
Okay, which... I'm try, trying to figure out which way that tooth is coming from. Is it coming from his upper jaw or lower jaw? I can't really tell. So we'll just have to... We'll just kind of fudge that. We won't really say one way or another. Ooh, almost forgot. There's another part. Well, it's not really a pouch necessarily. But we're just going to plop that color on there. And now we're going to push that around. Plop that paint down. Push it around. Now the straps look a little bit darker. Kind of lost the fact that those straps were supposed to be darker. Ah, this now has been here for a few minutes. And we'll just feather that out nicely. All the way out to a, the end of his muzzle here. And then, if we can, there. Now, a little bit of the indigo underside of his nose. What about, oh yeah, there's this. Well, looky there, we got Valandar, the red. Speaking of sculpting, we've been talking about sculpting for quite a while. Maybe we, might, we must have conjured Valandar the red. So folks, if you want to catch some digital sculpting on a stream, so Valandar. No, 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 no. Oh, th oh, thank you, Valandar the red. Here, look at this. A six-month subscription. It's the last few drops here in our very appropriately themed glass. Hey, Stealthy. How are you doing? So we've been working here about six hours. Uh, six hours and four minutes. And all three of these guys were nothing but primer. They were essentially about this color right here. So we did our War Cry Corvus Cabal. Then we did a little bit of a Glaive Wraith here. Thank you, Oils. And now we're kind of at the big finish here with our Wolf Shaman there. Oh, hey, Dotino. How are you doing? Uh, let me see. Yep, so <clears throat> now they're... Uh, if you want to check out last night's stream, we're going to back out. Well, actually, no, we won't do that. What we are going to do is bring in our wee little ring wraith right here, our witch king, and our nice little Gondor theme base with Oscar, the intrepid Gondorian warrior, going, man, I didn't sign up for this stuff. I did not sign up for this. But there's our, there's your fell beast. So we painted this, I think it was a week or two ago. We were working on the witch king and stuff. Oh, M's, M's the cat. How are you doing? Here, let's uh, get our Witch King up there nice and safe and sound. We've been working on more spooky things here for Sporktober. So obviously our, our Ossiarch Bone Reapers right here doing nice spooky things on the base. This uh, hag that we still haven't identified who actually makes this thing right here. And, well, speaking of wolfy things, we just a little bit of a Gates of Antares there. And we've been showing off some of our, some of our armies and such things. Yeah, we Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Oh, thank you so much, Stealthy, for the follow. So we have been showing some folks some of the armies that we... Love it. Now, here's some of our creature caster stuff that we have done. That was also in oils. Some more oils. That was also done in oils. That thing was insane because that tiny little base there is actually the size of a DVD. Now, you can actually go back and watch this. We have part of this on the YouTube channel. That's the biggest. Oh, that thing weighed 20 pounds. I swear it did. Here's some of our some other armies here. We got our Sisters of Battle. Also in oils. More of our little stealthy sisters here. Now, if you want to see the original army, 
There we go. So that was my original Sisters of Battle army. That was my 2014 tournament army. Yeah, that was uh, just a little bit of a cathedral right there. I think that kind of gives you a hint of just how big that was. Obviously, we have our bolt action armies. We love our display boards. So there was my Monte Cassino display board. And, of course, our dark sword figures. We love doing those. Each of these represents its own two-hour tutorial. So there's five of them there. Six more tutorials there. Some of those in oils. Some in acrylics. That one. Oh, that was oils. Oh, we painted this one up on stream. The Owlbear fa uh, family. And, of course, we've got our lovely Necrons done in TMM. Still with the OSL. We love our terrain, of course. Yeah, we've got videos on the terrain. And then we'll get down to some of our fun stuff here. Some of our, our Reaper figures. We love our Reaper miniatures. And, oh, here's my Harad army. There we go. We've got uh, plenty of cavalry for them as well. Love my desert bases. And of course, our Rohan army. And thanks again. To, oh, Stealthy, thanks so much for the sub. And we absolutely love our dull Amroth knights. Love our dull Amroth. Gotta have army of the dead. Morgul knights love to play with my Easterlings. And, of course, we have plenty of Song of Ice and Fire stuff, too, because it's it's square bait. Well, it's not quite square basing, but it is ranks and flanks. Here's some more of our Song of Ice and Fire stuff. A little more Lannister action for you. I do believe we've got some neutrals there. Then we're back into our Lannisters with the King's Guard. There's our Knights of Castlery Rock. Oh, there's your... There's some of your NCUs there for Song of Ice and Fire. We're getting into a little bit of Night's Watch and some Starks. There's your Tully Cav, some Warrior Sons. A little, little touch of freehand here and there. And you can go back and watch. I've done five of these cavalry units on stream. Literally five of these. And all five of them done on stream. Pick a unit, go back and watch it. Oh, well, good luck with the essay there, Stealthy. Oh, yes, MD Cat. That's uh, almost all M, uh, non metallic metal. Some of it, a little bit of Sky Earth, right? The SCNMM. And yeah, we've done some of that, obviously, here. A little bit of our non metallic there. Obviously, some object source lighting here. Where's, ah, here's a nice little, little fun example of some more of the non metallic metal on that big old blade and all of his armor and we we love doing some freehand of course our cypher lords here doing those sisters of battle you know uh, we we do vehicles too so for my for my time oh there goes the turret well we did i thought we had blue tech in there i guess not there was supposed to be blue tech in there we are going to get some more lights here, though. Because we got our white wolf here. We're going to give him some kind of final lights on his fur slash legs. Ooh, let's get some lighter stuff going over here, too. We need that. Yeah, like Valandar says, you... What's fun with the non-metallic metal stuff, well, it's true with TMM. I mean, you can do the same thing there. It's reflecting the environment. So, like here, okay, this thing, if it's going to be either metal or even something like obsidian, it can't be right next to this white fur in his leg without being affected in some way. So that's why we're lightening this up here. It's just basically to reflect that on here. This has a little bit of a brownishness to it because of the brownishness here in the, the rocks. 
which it really does make the non-metallic metal easy to figure out because if he's wearing a red shirt and he's got so that that armor like say some kind of armor bracer or whatever well you better reflect some red on that because well how is it not reflecting that red that's literally right next to it so it really does make it easier to figure out what goes where whether it's TMM or non-metallic metals No, hey, Steel. How are you doing? Oh, thanks, MZ. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's just something about the... doing that super reflective stuff with the Sky Earth, with the... reflecting the, the shields. Oh, what's here? Where is our... Ah, here he is. So this is another case of doing some of the, the Sky Earth there on the shield. And then some more of it on his armor. So you can see a little bit of a horizon line there. You can see actually this armor reflected onto his helmet there. You can see even a little bit of magenta there into his... Now I think here... Ah, uh, yeah. So see, we've, we've reflected some red onto the armor here because, well, how is it not reflecting all that red? Same, same goes over here. We reflect some of the red onto his shield there. Oh, thanks, Sean. Oh, we'll wait. We need some. We need some blacks in here. We need some blacks in there. And that's a bluish black. Now we're gonna get just a hint of brown in here. Oh, let's darken this up a touch before we get in with our lighter blues. The same kind of lighter blues that we got out here. We have plenty of darker brown in there. <clears throat> Sorry about that. The The voice is a little bit gravelly. We've done somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 hours of streaming in the last 24 hours, I think. All that and recording videos, too. So that's going to wipe out the voice just a bit. I'm going to just take a little bit of my, I almost called it thalo blue, but that's still Prussian blue over there. Let's get some of that oh, right in here. That's good. Yeah, just a hint of blue. It's also going to separate from our rocks over here. Okay, more over here. Not going to get any darker down there. We will try and just pick out a few little lights on our feathers here. I'm going to make that just a touch more in the bluish range. Oh, we did want to take some of our Egyptian violet over here. Yes, we do. We did some of that on the Corvus Cabal, and that really worked out well. Another little bit of a color change. Just a suggestion of it. Nobody's really going to look at that and go, oh, look at There's purple there. It's just going to look like a darker gray. When it's just a little hint of it like this. Yeah, one next little ju bit of juiciness there. How's about a little bit of that over here? Because if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. Let's get a little bit of this violet over here onto this. This side right here. Maybe even onto some of these skins slash leather. All right, his scully friends here. Do we want to darken some of that down? Oh, I would just do a little bit of our respect the umber here. Let's respect the umber. 
Does it have to be? Eh, maybe not quite such a glaze. Oh, there's a little bit of dark that's missing there, too. Uh, as much as I do enjoy having that little bit of a that blue that's that's just kind of naturally gotten into the skull because it was part of our pre-glaze, I think it does need to have a bit more warmth to it. It'll gently separate it from the blue in the feathers. Now, this side, we got to do something like what we we're doing on the other side. And we'll grab our our matte white. Do I oh, just a smidge of mixing into that? I keep wanting to call it thalo blue. It's it, that Prussian blue is very new. I think we've only used it just in the last few sessions. Always got to try out some new stuff. You never know what's going to hit. What well, what might miss? And then there might it might just been the miniature too. It might have just not been quite the right opportunity for it. So sometimes you gotta give it a try again, even though it maybe didn't work the way you wanted it to on a certain figure. Give it a try somewhere else. We're constantly trying new colors. Also trying to keep these feathers a little lighter than the stuff down here. Since these must be catching a little bit more of the light. We also have to keep in mind there's going to be some greenery on the base here because it's got to match previously done stuff. And that's just going to be a lot of a forest theme. That's another one of those things you just got to keep in mind as you're working. Oh yeah, that's right. There's, well, there's going to be fall foliage on that base. Better have maybe something that, that complements that fall foliage, red and gold foliage, well. Now I'm thinking I might just go for... Oh, there's my off-white yellow. I was wondering where the heck you went off to. We did this on the other skull. Kind of forgot to do it on this one. I haven't really determined exactly what critters these are. Uh, it's some kind of a bird, but don't exactly know what bird it was. We just went right to the do the cloak and the crow feathers because everything else in this particular army that's being played, that is being used for... It's got all kinds of raven theme to it. Some more lights in here. Ooh, let's get some right on the end of this. That feather right here. Now we'll go oppo. We're going to take some of our indigo blue. Maybe not quite that much. And now we're going to just draw in because it's, this is hand sculpt, not not a digital sculpt here. So sometimes you will get some irregularities and, and some of the things like the feathers, where that that sculpting tool is maybe pressed a little bit too close to the last bit of feather. Now let's get some a touch of cooler colors in here. We got plenty of warm colors. You can see it. Look out. It's picking up that cooler or uh, the warmer color. Gotta go back there. We get some more. Here, let's uh go, go back over here again. Yep. This is relatively dry because we just did a little bit of a glaze thing in there, so we better go in dry. Now some of our umber here. A hint of a shadow-ish there. Don't want to lose that, that nifty Terra Rosa right there because that's that's giving us a little bit of separation here. Well, let's go back to more Terra Rosa. 
right there on his shoulder. Boom. Ooh, actually, that too. Maybe even... Yep, on this little strap, whatever that is, might be holding that in place. And I know there's another thing up here. Yes. I knew there was something else up here. Wow, there's actually a couple of either studs or rivets or something on that. I will take a little bit of my cadmium yellow here. And we'll just throw something because we've got... We do have a little bit of our, our verdigree suggestion there. I think we can go back in here. Some of this we haven't worked in in this area for at least a good 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Hey, Snowyak in the house. How are you doing? Well, okay, backlog. Yeah, you don't want to do a face plant onto the, well, either onto your phone or onto your keyboard. Thanks for hanging out. It's appreciated. Well, uh, we'll be doing this again in about. Well, it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning here, so yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 to 15 hours, we'll be doing this again. So, yeah, I shall hopefully see you soon. Yeah, Snowy Act, this one has been, it's a uh, Signum. I've never heard of them before. I don't know if that's, I think that is the name of the company and not like the name of the game system or something. I've never heard of that either. But it's uh, it's still it's sculpted the old-fashioned way by hand, and and the first oh I think four hours was it I think the first four hours and something four hours and change we did these these two right here so a little bit of a glaive wraith right there and one more from that Corvus Cabal faction I think that's the last one that's got object source lighting on it the last two are little tiny ones that don't have any of the object source lighting. I hope all is well for you. Yeah, let's, yeah. Okay, that's better. We need some more of our lights up in here. We need that to not be, actually has to be a different Different color there. We're going to give that more of a grayish blue. We'll start with some glazes here. Give that a little bit of a change of pace. There we go. And then we'll come back in later. Hit that with more of a bluish white. That should do the trick. Anything? Oh, yeah, this needs some more separation. If you want to have that light. We better get some darks in there. Oh, gee whiz. And now that we put that dark in there, I think we can. Speaking of some lights there, get a little, some kind of lighter thing out on the end of this. Go back. Now this has to be much thicker, obviously. Thin over thick. Vice versa. Good enough. Do we need to? Yeah, let's... Uh, this one right here is a little bit of wobbliness. Again, with the sculpting there, it, it happens from time to time. Could even be the casting, and more maybe more likely the casting. It was a uh, one of your typical prototypical resin figures. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So Snowyak, uh, Kathy's gonna. She's got some. Let's see. What was she gonna be making tomorrow? I, well, I think uh, only there was gonna be some. Some yummy meats on the menu here tomorrow. I know she's been working on her goblins on her streams. 
Now, I don't want these to get too late because, again, that's supposed to be a white wolf over there. Which means I'm going to try and double down on some more lights on Mr. Wolf's face over here. If we can. Ah, yeah, we can still make that lighter. We can even just chuck in a little bit of a f suggestion of fur texture right there. I think we'll do the same on the other side of his face here. Here, let's do some lighting on the edge of this now. His knuckles here can get lighter. That's good. Oh, let's get this thing again. Somehow we lost the a little bit of an edge on that strapping there. Now it's back. I still cannot for the life of me figure out what in the world is in that pouch. I've been, I don't know, we've been at this thing about a couple hours. I still have not been able to figure out what the heck is in there. We'll just throw some kind of generic color on that. Um, it could be, it could be chickens, it could be potatoes. I have no idea what the heck is in there. Could be anything. Yeah, Steelers suggest it is stones. I don't. I, this this right here, this one thing, makes it look kind of like the the chicken. You know, like it's got the wing. Oh, I know what it. That's why I'm I'm thinking it looks like a like a chicken or a turkey, because we were talking about we'll just still do our own Thanksgiving here, even though it's just going to be us, which I'm all in favor of because that means. Boku leftovers. Yes, indeed, baby. There's going to be turkey everything. There'll be turkey ice cream at one point here, probably. Or turkeys. There's going to be a lot of different turkey things. And then, of course, that all just kind of leads us into our cookie decorating stream that will be taking place for the holidays So definitely you can go, I mean, if you want proof of our annual tradition, well, you can, every year I, I do it on the blog, too. But you can just go to the Instagram, Instagram page there. Just what Peleus, just like my stream name here. Oh, I love that, that nice yellowish thalo green that worked its way into there. Go ahead and look at, check out all the craziness that we have done with some of those Christmas cookies. Ooh, we need some, we need a light right across the top of this here. How do we not see you? That's better. Let's get an edge there and there. Boom. Yeah, Snowy Egg. And they actually do taste good, believe it or not. That frosting actually tastes really good. And the cookies taste really good. We actually still have some frozen from last year, believe it or not. Uh, well, they were supposed to be brought to different people's families for Christmas and stuff and other holidays that never happened this year. So that's why we still have, we literally still have some Christmas cookies from last year, which is kind of funny. Do I want, eh, not going to go any darker on his face there. I know I need to get some dark right in here. It doesn't look like much of anything on screen there, but that little extra bit of contrast there means a lot for that edge being sharp. Same here and here and here. And there. Uh, let's see, steel a steel green the other day. I was all happy, and then I realized I already had that hue. Oh, that's fine, Stila. 
that is fine because look at this. Where the heck did my starter set go? Oh, there you are. Yeah, I got the same thing. Thalo green. Oh, look, and the Viridian hue. They are definitely very different. They are very different things. So if you got them both, ah, you're all good. You are all good. You know what? I've got to actually, I need to remix this. I keep forgetting this stupid color here. This is actually, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a, a MIG ammo color that I really liked. So I've got to remember to put this in a stupid container here. Actually, there's a couple that I still got to mix. There's like two colors that I have not used in forever. Not because I don't like them. It's just they ran out and I forgot to remix them in their jars because all these new colors kept coming in. So yeah, it's not like we hated the old colors. We just, new ones kept coming in to test and try and that sort of thing. It, it kind of is, it kind of is snow egg. Now I don't know where, do I have the container just somewhere around here? Ah, there it is. So that's, uh, it, it does kind of have a little bit of that old goblin green look to it. Uh, they usually have the same name if the pigment is, is it? Well, there is a big difference, uh, hue. So the reason why this costs so much more than this is basically one is cheese whiz and the other one is cheddar cheese. That's kind of the difference between the two. <laughs> I mean, the hue, it, it can get the job done. It's not, I'm, I've certainly used it plenty of times. But there is a substantial difference. Just like when we compared the the action, remember the the reds video when we compared the cadmium red hue to real cadmium red, and that was a huge difference. I mean, the two colors couldn't have been more different. Of course, <laughs> one cost twenty something dollars, one cost two dollars. Ah, uh, maybe like two dollars and fifty cents. But for, for most folks, the that, that starter set, that should be more than adequate. Heck, I, I don't know how many, what was it, three some odd years I was using that before I really started to add very much to it. It's really only this year that I started adding to that. So I had it for almost four, actually darn near four years before I started adding to it. And it was really more just out of necessity. There was just some colors that just weren't in that starter set so it wasn't even like i was dissatisfied with them or anything like that ah there we go it needed some of that up on top there though definitely snowy act there was not a much in the way of foods today and just well knowing what's supposed to be made later today there's also we're kind of craving that yeah, I will get a couple of lighter stuff here on the ends. Yeah. Oh, plus two. I mean, it is, oh, it's one o'clock in the morning here. So I think even for normal humans, which we are not here, I guess that's got to be around breakfast time. And of course, even just thinking of cereal actually makes me a wee bit on the hungry side. Yeah, we'll get a couple of our, uh, a couple lighter shots here. Yeah, I know that uh, we've had the, a lot of discussion here tonight about pigment numbers and all that kind of stuff. And I've been trying to, <laughs> I've been begging people to maybe not rely on those pigment numbers so much because, well, two different paint companies, each number, well, Let's just say they're using two very different pigment numbers for ultramarine blue. One company, basically it's ultramarine blue. The other company, it was cobalt blue. Now, uh, those colors aren't super different, so that's not surprising that the, the numbers would be close. But still, just trust your eyes, essentially, I guess is what I was advocating. 
And I, I know that's difficult, especially for folks that are relying just, they, they like numbers. And I understand that. Uh, I guess in the 3D printing thing, I could tour because like for me, I keep asking, okay, what setting should I use? What number should I use? Where someone who is very experienced with the 3D printing would go, oh, yeah, you want your your pull rate at this, and and you want your you want to set your exposure time to this. Oh wait, you got that resin. Oh, you better bump that down. Take the other thing, move it up. So they would just have that knowledge and experience. They haven't just used it so much. <laughs> Which is why one of the billion things I've got to do over the winter is is get more of the 3D printing going. Wow, that's still the original glaze back there. Interesting. Oh, let me see. The Baron says, I had that happen. I bought burnt umber and got burnt sienna dark. Of course, there's Burst Sienna, which is probably a great color for Flare. Or uh, maybe Rust, because that shows Corrosion. Speaking of some orange here, I'm going to just try and sneak in. A pinch of orange over here. Just a pinch of orange. Yep. I don't want it to look like fire or even rust. I'm just trying to shift that color a little bit. That's about a bit more of our red up here too. It'll make our verdigris look a little bit more on the reddish side or greenish side. Uh, let's see. I missed the last couple of streams. Uh, actually, the this is the this was sent to Al sent this over. Well, and actually, we're using a lizard, genuine alizarin crimson for the first time. We were mostly using it here, but we've also found some other uses. But this is uh, we used it on last night's stream. So Stila, if you want to go check out last night's stream with the the massive fell beast, and we've been making well, obviously a lot of use of that matte white here, and I I think it does actually. It seems to dry, well, it dries faster, significantly faster, maybe, maybe not. Still to be kind of determined yet. Here, let's get a little touch of our red over here, too. Oh, gosh. We really need it up here. Definitely need some of that up here. Perhaps a little bit lighter. That's good enough. Can't really tell if that's his hand behind there or not, so won't mess around with that too much. Yes, you gotta buy an umber that you can respect. We gotta res how can you respect the umber without the umber? Ooh, that's like the ultimate disrespect to not even have the umber. Now, I, speaking of burnt sienna, that is a color that when I start doing those color charts on browns, we will be bringing back the burnt sienna. And I'm sure that when we do those, we'll find there'll be something that pops out of that that session there that just says, oh, you know what, you got to do this. This is some, some new function that the burnt sienna can perform, probably something in the way of glazing. I mean, we've we've used it for rust and all that. Now, one of the reasons that we've kind of gotten away from it is that I I do know that it is glossier. It tends to dry a little bit glossier than some of the other browns. Terra Rosa basically kind of kicked in the door and took over because we know that Terra Rosa is not at all in any way shiny, like not at all. Hey, Mikey. Uh, I just got out of bed to break to bake some bread, and then go back after. That bread sounds good too. Well, pretty much just most things edible right now are sounding pretty fabulous. I hope uh, the bread goes well. 
Ooh, let's get some lighter stuff here too, shall we? Uh, yeah, well, let's uh, lighten the end of this a bit. Still not quite sure if that is his hand in there or his arm or if there's another layer. Nah, very hard to tell. We'll just throw something a little bit lighter here and we'll just let that blind blend. You can see, look how dark, look how dark that is on the end of that there. I essentially just shove the brush in there and let it mix on its own. What's going on over here with this stuff? So our jade, that's, boy, I'm, it, it really is an homage to all things confrontation, that's for sure. All things confrontation are the, down to the, that pinkishness in his face. Would have been interesting to see the confrontation guys using oils instead of all of the, all of those layers and layers of glazing. That could have been fun. I bet you they would have liked the oils. I think their, their stuff would have really gone well with it. Ah, nice little separation right there too. Ah, this, this could use some darks. And then a couple of highlights in it too. We've got a bunch of sort of mid-tones there. Not much in the way of darker stuff, so here's our darks. And there's a couple of, on this uh, crescent over here. It could use some things. So right up here. Then over here. Not sure why all of a sudden that's starting to remind me of Necron flying things, but it is. Okay. Lighter here. Whatever kind of a runic sort of thing that might be. Still don't know what's in there. I, that one thing just looks like a chicken. I'm guessing probably not. I might get a little bit cheeky there with some more. A little more white on his foot there. And back here. There is so much of the original. Look, look, look at how dark that, look how dark the brush is now. That is really nice and dark. My goodness. Here, let's get a little bit more of our lighter color here. We Oh, yeah. Even if it's just a little hint of light there on those toes. I can barely see what's going on in there. We'll just slap some of this lighter color back here. And look how that was, that was basically white when it went in. And you could see what just a little back and forth back there in the crevices was going to do really changes that so we'll grab a touch more of this oh geez i guess mike what kind of bread is it going to be is it going to be banana bread pumpkin bread what kind of rye bread what kind of bread are we looking at there what we're looking at over here is some more something in here and oh let's grab this we haven't used this since the very beginning of this figure here that's some of our holbein what was that the blue gray which we've just been calling the faded ultramarine of oil paints because it very much is like the faded ultramarine yeah yeah you think we don't have darks underneath there look at all that dark underneath there so we go back we grab some more it's rye and wholemeal sourdough. That sounded pretty... I'm, geez, I'm trying to think the last time I had sourdough bread. That's been a while. 
Now I think what we've got to do is we either have to go thicker here or dramatically thinner. I'm going to try the thicker paint and sure enough the thicker paint sticks to the thinner paint. Yes. All right, we got a couple of rocks here. I mean, not that I won't probably hit these with some of my vegetation, but we'll just, uh, that's still the, the pre-glaze that's sitting there. We can, we can use that still. Like this. There. Okay. Nice and light there. Oh, let's get some maybe some. Let's see if I can get, sneak some darks into whatever the heck that thing is. This is our Van Dyke brown. Now ah, that that's more helpful than I thought it was going to be. Underneath the, I just need some regular old dark under here. Okay, boy, that's almost impossible to reach, reach, reach with the brush. Okay, we still have a little bit of our blue-gray left here. I just saw these feathers over here. They just have nothing on them. That's just our original pre-glaze there still. So let's let's add on to that. It is. It has this nice kind of reddish blue. It says blue-gray, but it's... It's lighter than the old shadow gray, but it does have that bit of reddishness to it, which is nice. Okay, a bit more of our same blue-green here. We, we just didn't do much in here. Let's get a little bit of that in here. We might have to lighten up some of his fur. Yes, it's it's in shadow here, but if I'm going to add the lights to the cloak there, which is supposed to be, well, basically blue-black, we need to maybe just add a couple of hints of lighter stuff here on his fur. All right, so I think we got the eyes down. We have this. Do, well, let's do a little stump here on this this first skelly here, because this other skull it's from a different manufacturer. And it's not quite so crisp as the GW one, so we're gonna have to kind of work this one a bit. The teeth kind of aren't there, so we're just gonna have to paint in a few. Yeah, GW one, that's just a your regular old plastic skull right there, so not a problem. A little bit of an edge on that pouch there. Oh god, this thing could also use a little bit of an edge on it. Whatever this crescent thing is, I'm just uh a case of course I keep thinking croissants, of course, now that we're talking about uh Nap Steeler wants to see some film noir. So let's look at all three of these in film noir. So let's let's take a look at our, our blues here. Some of the colors that we've got are, are let me see if I can back this out one second here. There. And now let's look at our value here. So the cloak, it still is a little bit lighter up here. See how it does get darker down here? We, so we've got our highlights up there. You can see that. Now we've got our other two. Let's move you over here. So plenty of value, right? Plenty of lights and darks and shadows and all the fun stuff. We bring back that color here. 
and all of a sudden the intensity comes back. So we did use some thalo, or not thalo, well we used thalo green on it, but we also used the fluorescent green for the first time on this guy. Where is my oil painted companion here? So we can try and compare those two together. I'm looking, where's Mr. Oil one? Now oh, he kind of disappeared. Not sure where he went. But this is definitely significantly better than even the oil painted one. Now what I do have is the acrylic one here. So yeah, he just kind of blows that one away. Uh, the intensity of those greens in there. But actually, and you know, the sword or the glaive still very much the same. And of course now she definitely goes well with some of the other Corvus Cabal here. Even though we use a little bit of a lizard on that. So there we go. There's our little campfire right there. Set you back over here and let's grab this guy. I think the teeth, well, we'll just leave the teeth as they are. Speaking of that alizarin here, just going to grab a touch of that. And his bottom jaw, boy, that alizarin really is interesting. There. Okay. Going to use a little bit of that red right here. I'm just trying to get colors that draw you towards that face. And I think that nice bright red should do it. Let's get something under here. Maybe just a regular gray under here. Not a bluish gray. It's not facing the sky or anything, but just a little bit of a regular gray. And look at that. You can see all that dark on the end. Of the, that's still the pre-glaze there. That stuff that we put there a couple of hours ago that we can still work with. And you can see, yeah, you can see some of the browns in there, some of the umber, because we wanted this to be warmer. Now, we're also going to have that green flock that goes in here. Oh, hey, guy with the hair. Oh, we have plenty of things painted with the plenty of bones here now most of these are acrylic and we're just gonna head this way we'll show you some of the older things first you can see them on the blog as well i have a ton of bone stuff so there we go those are bones steel bones more bones more bones and we have any more bones? Nope, those aren't bones. That is not bones either, but we actually have some bones right here. Oh, Hello, little harmon. Spark my gun, just... Nope, thank you so much, guy with the hair, for the follow. That is appreciated. So this one is bones right here, as you can <laughs> guess by the floppy little uh, scythe right there. So he is bones. Actually, this is also bones right here and then we've got more bones right here and again floppy wing so that is bones you can watch all of these especially this one here this was done over ReaperCon weekend so there you go so oh thanks guy i appreciate that uh steel it's gonna it's gonna depend entirely on the miniature we used three entirely different pre-glaze this had no indigo whatsoever this had only a tiny bit this was mostly egyptian violet with a little bit of indigo and brown on the one side fanchion red on the other this one the only place we used the indigo was a little bit on the cloak everywhere else was something else besides indigo it will depend entirely on the miniature this one was definitely more umbers and, and greens and other such things so very little indigo in the pre-glaze that may be a little bit towards the head. Oh, a little bit on the, the weapon here. Now, of course, and this one too, I think this was also not very much, not much in the way of indigo here either. 
that was actually more of a thalo blue right there we did the thalo greens here yep and on these horses right here the only one where indigo played a major role was going to be on this guy right here so every single miniature is going to be a different situation uh, Steela, I very seldom use that kind of at all. Uh, sometimes I will use it maybe more on the bases. So, and here I was taking kind of a burnt umber with some black in the base, but black has no color to it, it's just dead. And remember, the whole point of the pre glaze is something that when you hit these, see this lighter color hits this, well, it starts to turn that brownish color. If it's just black, all you're going to get is dead gray. Oh, like guy, it's that, uh, well, we've been, actually, I started painting miniatures almost, well, it, technically it is more than 20 years ago, but 20 years ago was kind of when I first started really sort of painting miniatures. Not, not, it was, was still, we were doing the 2D art as far as our living goes at that time, although by the next year all of a sudden painting miniatures was our living so that's uh that is kind of what accelerated that because i have to paint hundreds and hundreds of miniatures every year and when you just do something a bunch of times oh things are bound to stick something's bound to stick now, of course, the oil paints have really accelerated some of the things that I can do, which is fantastic. Absolutely love the oil paints. And that's what we've been using all the, during the stream right here. Oh, yeah, here's some of the old 2D art. Now I'm going to scroll up here a bit so I can get to this. So this is some of the 2D art that we did back in the day. So this is before we started painting miniatures. Oh, look, a wolf. That was watercolors on hot press watercolor board. This was also watercolors on hot press watercolor board. Uh, the pastels, boy, it's been a long time since I worked in pastels. Over 20 years, I'm pretty sure. I still have pastels, never get to do those anymore. And this is not an airbrush, that's just acrylics with a hairy stick. And now we get to this thing that I did when I was 13. I was working with oils, technically about 12 is when I started working with the oils. So yeah, that was uh, that was way back in the day. There's another painting that I did when I was 13 that I am desperately trying to find. I have not been able to locate that. Now actually, if you go back, watch some of the older streams and go to the YouTube channel. We actually did this with contrast paints. Now, it was contrast paints mixed with lighter opaque colors. Actually, the tattoos were done with, what is that? Uh, not Ian and Dark Sand, but the Leviathan Blue. That's actually Achillean Green. A little bit of shyish purple there. Uh, Snakebite Leather in a lot of places there. So, yeah, I can go back and check out some of those older videos there. And actually, you can go back and watch yesterday's stream where we were working on the diorama base for the big old fell beast with the Witch King sitting on top. And of course, Oscar, the intrepid or somewhat insane Gondorian warrior trying to fight off the fell beast. I tried to, these days, I try to save all of the past sessions as highlights. Since obviously, I guess even as a partner, you only have 60 days on your VODs or something like that. I just wish I had known from the beginning that if you make a highlight of something, it lasts forever. I just, I did not know that. Oh, and that you can do the entire session. <laughs> wish that those two things would have been really nice to know. So, oh, thanks there. Our moderator there just threw up some of the links to the, the YouTube channel. Here, let's do some more darks down here. And this is going to be, well, we are back to our indigo right here. So sometimes now, actually, so on the Osterix right here, there was very little indigo. 
actually well we had Egyptian violet over here and then pretty much every color under the rainbow maybe there was a little bit of indigo right in here oh there was some of the indigo right there that was about it oh yeah that's uh <laughs> the uh we use these these dead jars right here so these are that's actually dead reaper paint sitting in there yeah you can kind of see that flopper this is how you reaper paint used to come and not 20 years ago either that was not as long ago as you might think that reaper paint came in those kind of containers I think this is another reason why I also try to stress not to get too reliant on any one color. Now, of course, that's the other advantage of the oils, is that colors have a tendency to stick around for, well, centuries. Whereas with some companies like Schmeem, Schmirk Shop, and others that like to occasionally kill a paint line and then throw something else in its place, Hey, Pagan Samurai, how are you doing? Nice to see you back. We're going to get ourselves a couple of... Just a couple more darks here out on the end of our feather. Almost, I keep, for whatever reason, I forget which, uh, it must have been one of the, the Lord of the Rings Great Eagles that I was painting. And somehow I kept saying over and over again uh, leaves I kept calling the feathers leaves I have no idea why fatigue most likely I would guess is the biggest culprit but yeah I kept calling them leaves ah yeah we've been hearing that there's some places getting ready for some frost it's it's cooler here I, my guess is it's in the upper 40s. Well, no, in upper 40s. Probably low 40s, maybe 43, 42, something like that. Because I do believe that's what it was this morning when, when, well, yeah, when I got up, I think it was about 44, something like that. I don't mind, actually. I, well, actually, I would just love a winter where it was 20-something degrees every single day. And not like the madness of last winter. Last winter things got really crazy because we had a day where it was 63 degrees and 24 hours later it was 10 below zero. That's not counting the 40 below wind chill. So if you're counting the wind chill that was it was a hundred I think it was a 102 degree temperature shift in 24 hours. Yeah, I think, well, I guess, I don't know if Pennsylvania has different weather, whether in the, like in the western part, the central part, or in the eastern part of it. Now, oh, we can't lose, can't lose this lighter color here. Now for us, sometimes the lake makes a big difference. In the wintertime, if the wind blows off of the lake, it gets warmer. In the summer, it'll get cooler. Let's use some of our barite green. We have a little touch of it left. Let's use a little smidge of that. Well, it's definitely here. Uh, well... But the house is here, they are ovens in the summer, and they are freezers in the winter time. So we are on the south side of Chicago. Yep, steal a smidge, which is a little bit less than a pinch, about a it's about a quarter of a touch, which is a little bit less than a bit. And of course all measurements are subject to immediate change, depending on whatever whimsy we are on. We'll get this a little lighter up here, too. Well, let's, uh, you know what? I'm going to try and uh, move some of this stuff around here. Yes, yeah, well, you definitely have uh, 
quite the interesting body of water to live next to. Now, I guess you guys, I don't know if you have ever heard of something called a seiche. That's something we have here. So basically, because Lake Michigan is essentially a 900 foot deep bathtub, when the wind blows from the west strong enough and it blows straight over to the other side of the lake, it pushes a wall of water to the Michigan side of the lake, which bounces back to our side. So basically, it's like a very low grade tsunami. And every other year, a bunch of fishermen get swept out into the lake by a seiche. And there are seiche warnings, but a lot of them just don't listen to the seiche warnings. And it quite literally is like a gigantic bathtub where you would push all the water to one side, it bounces off the bathtub and comes back over to the other side. I'm pretty sure that the English Channel doesn't work that way. Yeah, the Great Lakes, um, I forget which is the deepest of the Great Lakes, but most of them are in the... Lake Michigan is one of the... Well, that's why they're the Great Lakes. That's why they hold 25% of the Earth's fresh water. We got it right here. No, not 20%, not 25%. Sorry. I shortchanged it by 5%. So, yeah, Lake Michigan is very narrow, but very deep. Ah, there we go. I figured Superior had to be... It's, it's all glacial right here. Lots of... It, well, that's why Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, but all of the Great Lakes were formed by glaciers. Which is why, when I was a kid, we used to go to Thornton Quarry and we used to dig up fossils. I don't know, I think my brother still has all the trilobites. Super common fossil around here, that and those crazy ferns. Well, any kind of tropical plants. Used to be a shallow inland ocean here. I'll catch you later, Mikey. I hope that the bread works out. I'm going to put a couple of lights there on, on Mr. Rope, which actually is literally a piece of wire that they corkscrewed together. That's kind of an innovative way to get rope really fast, having sculpted rope out of green stuff. That's that's kind of an innovative solution right there. And I am going to get a little bit of a highlight on that side, too. Oh, hey, Doc Barstool. How are you doing? Yo, let's get some... A couple of more lights on his leg. Yeah, let's do that. There's not much left of our lighter colors here. We'll make do with what we got. And this is this is almost 14 hours worth of of vintage. This is unbelievable. That was acrylics. That would be a complete disaster area. It's so funny how much less the oil paints you use. Oh, geez, 79. When's the last time it was 79 here? Gee whiz. I know in some of the suburbs around here, they were scraping ice off of windows just last week. But as I said here, it's all about those massive rapid temperature shifts. Which, as uh, anyone who was at Adepticon a few years ago will know, it went from about 55 degrees in rain to 45 degrees in rain to 35 degrees and rain with a 50 mile an hour wind. Then it started to snow. It snowed about two inches. And a few hours later, it was 70 degrees and sunny. It was quite literally all four seasons in about 
11 hours. But of course, uh, up north for our moderator there, I do believe there's uh, there's going to at least be some frost today, if not some snow. Here it, it's always tricky. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Oh, thank you so much, Vomiter Rat, for the follow. That is appreciated. Well, I'll catch you later, Snowyak. Thanks for joining. Yeah, that is definitely... There's some wild, hot climate things that go on down there. That's for sure. Oh, this is the question I've been meaning to ask forever. So where are the Australian Alps located? And is there such a thing? Because when I was told there are snow-capped mountains in Australia, I thought, where the heck are these things? I mean, New Zealand, one thing, but Australia? I did not re recall an area in Australia that would have snow-covered peaks where you can do the skiing thing and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Pagan Samurai, you can have all of our rain if you so wish, because we have been setting records here year after year. There was a point where they said Lake Michigan is going dry, and now Lake Michigan is as high as it's ever been. Now they're almost saying it's too high. And this is just a few years after predicting that it was going to go dry like oh gosh what's the lake in the soviet union that basically was destroyed i think they saved one of the lakes but the other one is just dry and gone ah so new south wales so uh, victoria border okay not the only in winter ice patches last in so okay I think there was one, and that one in, in the Soviet, well, Soviet Union, they were able to save one of the two. The other one, pretty much gone, never to be seen again. Do I want any, eh, I don't want any lighter stuff. I've got to get some dark. We've been doing a lot of playing around with middle tones and all that other kind of stuff. Let's, let's go back to some darks over here on these straps. Just put this here, and now let's start pushing that around. That's better. There's just way too much light color on that for something where he's, like, literally over the top of it, casting a shadow on it. Do I need to get any lighter in here? Oh, gosh, I need to do something back there, and I'm going just to keep messing around with what is remains. Boy, this is the first time we have ever used up all of the blue-gray from Holbein in any painting session. Well, we did use a bunch of it for the pre-glaze here, which is the first time we've ever used it as a pre-glaze color. So, Steela, yeah, that's another thing right there. We did some very different pre-glaze colors on this guy. And we have well that's kind of that's kind of the trend and you're probably just going to be seeing that more and more and more as we just keep changing the pre-glaze colors getting a little bit more targeted yeah we actually especially on him basically whatever was in the brush mixed with that that crazy kind of bluish gray from Holbein and we use that and that was pretty wild you know I'm gonna go back here I'm gonna give me some of this that's your matte white come on there we go this is a very different container so I'm, I'm not quite used to squeezing that container I'm like uh, how much do I really need to squeeze on that thing all right Back to some of our lights here. Especially on 
this side that's yeah we need something really nice and strong here if we want it to be either metal or obsidian one of the one of those two need some super bright lights there no i didn't know that uh, popcorn destroyed ukraine ukraine's fields i would imagine <laughs> There's not many things that are still usable in many parts of the Soviet Union there. Oh, let's get a couple of more lights. Oh, yeah, these guys here, too. Yeah, we'll do a couple little light edges along this. Something along here. up here if we're gonna just keep that as our little pieces of jade Ooh, get a touch of light right up there some here just trying to highlight that little bit of a rune there now this thing we shall respect the umber Boy, the one thing that you never see anymore, and yeah, this just goes to how long ago I was in Boy Scouts, fish and wildlife management, and they they always showed the picture of the farm fields where they had it was always a hill. Ah, look at see look at the capillary action. It just did that by itself. I was going back in there to do some more stuff, and the capillary action said, "Don't worry, I got you. I got you." Let's do the same on this side then. And let's see if the capillary action is going to do the same thing. Of course, my computer science merit badge, the actual patch, has punch cards and magnetic tape. And of course, on one of my citizenship badges, we had to construct a bomb shelter. which would be sweet to have one of those stockpile with all kinds of yummy treats yeah let's get to uh, some more darks back here using our little little bit of a glaze there that's our umber glaze we respect that umber we'll let our Light interiors and mix with that. Okay, now that kind of, now we got some turn there. We had no turn whatsoever, nothing. I'm gonna do some more Van Dyke brown right along this edge here. Little more here. <laughs> 